Hello and welcome to Records Rebuilds. This is our C8 transmission filter change video. This is a C8Z06, but it should work for any C8, and it's gonna be better than any other transmission change video on the internet for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's going to contain all the torque specs that you need. Now, I've seen other videos that do that, so no big whoop, but this one is also gonna show you how to use a computer to perform the, the procedure the way that uh, General Motors intended, where you run uh, the transmission fluid through the filter before removing the filter. That's what their procedure calls for. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can do that at home. Okay, a few points of discussion before we get started. Uh, number one is I'm an amateur. I'm not a professional mechanic. I made a video about what I did that worked for me. If you should choose to replicate anything in this video, obviously you do so at your own risk. Uh, second point, um, why would you wanna do this procedure, this automatic uh, or automated flush of the transmission? Well, number one, in the manual it says you should do this anytime you change the filter, just before you change the filter. Uh, it says in the manual that it runs fluid through the the transmission at a, an extra high pressure. I believe the idea is that it will uh, dislodge particles when it runs through there at a higher pressure than normal and you'll catch all those in the filter and then you pull the filter to get rid of them. Um, I don't really need to understand it, but it, it makes sense to me. Uh, I'm just gonna do whatever they tell me to do as far as how to service the vehicle. The third point is during the programming portions of this video, you are going to see a check engine light on the dash. That is because when I shot this video, the front bumper was off the car. There are several sensors that are unplugged that gave that check engine light. You will not have a check engine light when you run this video. I'm sorry for the distraction, but uh, it's not pertinent to anything else that's going on in the video. Okay, so we are going to run, before we change this uh, transmission filter, we're gonna run the hydraulic system flush procedure. And we're gonna plug in our trusty old NT510 Elite uh, from Foxwell. And then, uh, let's see, yeah, you can see it there. We'll go to General Motors. We'll go to Smart VIN, so it'll detect the VIN, so I don't have to type it in. And that is the correct VIN. Not right now. GPS connected. All right, so we do have a PDR. It's gonna ask you a whole bunch of crazy questions here. We have front and rear view video processing. We have wireless accessory charging module. We have parking assist with rear sensors, steering column lock electrical, line zone alert and now we're going to go to control modules we're going to go to transmission and i had to look up the rpo code for my transmission it is m1m for my particular car so you can see m1m is on there it's the second one on the list and we're going to load data Hope you can see that, loading data. Please wait, loading data. All right, anyway, so we're gonna go all the way down to number five, which is configuration slash reset functions. And then we're gonna go down to hydraulic system flush procedure. This may take up to 30 seconds to complete. Okay. Okay, I forgot. Uh, the transmission fluid has to be 140 degrees Fahrenheit to do this test. So if you look down on here, I hope you can see this. So transmission fluid, oil temperature out of range. So as soon as that gets in, it's gonna go as soon as, it says depress and hold brake pedal there. Can you see that depress and hold brake pedal? When I hold the brake pedal, it turns to pass. So as soon as it gets up to temp, when I hit the brake pedal, it will start the procedure. Okay, so I have waited about 20 minutes and now our transmission uh, our transmission fluid has been come to 140 and I accidentally hit the brake uh, sorry but it said all approved and then when I hit the brake it launched it so shift transmission into neutral it says all right so we're into neutral so we hit shift transmission to neutral we hit OK F3 
and it just says hydraulic system flush test in progress and we know that this test is conducted at 2000 rpms so we know this is working correctly okay so we're still here our transmission temps now is up to 192 test still in progress and I, I spoke incorrectly earlier this is eight minutes it does this for eight minutes uh, to do this hydraulic flush that you're supposed to do before you uh, change the transmission filter all right so after we finish that it just says procedure complete so we hit OK and we're done with it so just to review this is a good this is from the the GM manual uh, so brake pedal needs to be applied engine needs to be running transmission fluid temperature needs to be above 140 transmission range Parker neutral and uh, vehicle speed zero miles per hour those are the conditions to start the test so uh, yeah hopefully this allows people to do transmission filter changes at home so I know they're kind of expensive at the dealer um, so I don't the problem is you're gonna have a hard time finding which scan tools do this and which ones don't I can tell you the Foxwell NT 510 Elite does do it uh, this this NT 510 Elite does it, it does everything that I've ever wanted a scan tool to do there's nothing it doesn't do um, so I'd recommend picking one up now let's go actually take the filter out okay so the first order of business is we need to remove this fiberglass sheeting right here um, it's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. There are 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter bolts up there. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory which ones you need to take out, but if you're not sure, you can watch me in fast motion here. Um, one thing about these, you will notice that I always uh, break them loose with a regular ratchet and then I'll use the impact on them. Uh, I know, you know, if I did this for a living, I'd probably use the impact on everything, try to be faster, uh, but I'm taking my time. Uh, so that I can get this done right and I don't want to mess up any of these bolts. So now we're going to take off this metal shielding here, uh, but these are called E16 bolts. Um, they're, they're different. They're a reverse Torx bit. I would definitely use the ratchet to get them off because they do slip a little bit, even when you have the, the right uh, socket for them. There's two seven millimeters back here and back here, and then out towards the side here, it looks like those are 13 millimeters out there. So we're going to pull all those out and again, you can watch it in fast mode if you don't understand how. So here is our uh, transmission canister filter. And uh, you can see where it's at right up there. Uh, and these are an E8. So the other one was E16, but these are E8. So we'll use those to take that off of there. All right, so then we're just going to grab this filter with needle nose pliers and pull it right out. So then the cap here, you can see that blue piece of rubber there. 
We're going to pull that seal off there and replace it with a new one. And then we're going to put this back on. It can only go in, in one orientation, uh, just so you know. Um, the, the screws don't work uh, except for one way. Alright, so we're going to take our new filter. We're going to coat uh, this O-ring with some DT, DCT fluid. And then we're just going to push it up in there until it pops in, or so I'm told. There you go, pops right in there. All right, so I'm sorry I wasn't able to film it very well uh, because it takes more than one set of hands, uh, but this cap to this filter is a really big problem. The manual makes it really clear that there, there are a lot of pitfalls here. So <clears throat> the manual actually says, well, first off, they include new bolts every time. So it's a new set of bolts every time it comes with the filter. So you got to make sure you put in new bolts. They don't want them over torqued. These are very tiny bolts. It's very easy to over torque them. <clears throat> They're torqued to 53 inch pounds. So you want to get that exactly right. The other part is you need to seat this thing before you start to torque those down. So um, you push on it and then you push pretty hard and you'll feel it snap up in there and you don't start to tor torque these bolts until it is already pushed up in there. <clears throat> uh, the other thing is they recommend that you use a thread chaser on each one of these so that you don't accidentally over torque the bolts like if there was some anti-seize or something left up in there and it was really hard for the bolt to turn it could it could break for that reason. So um, all of that they went to the trouble to put all of that in the manual so be very careful with this. One thing to note that I forgot to mention, you're going to want to lubricate that blue rubber o-ring around this cap before you try to reinstall it. Okay, so while we're putting this shield up here, let's talk torque specs for all these bolts. So the seven millimeter screws right in the back there, uh, those are 22 inch pounds. Uh, the M8 bolts, these ones here, that funny pattern, the one that there's a ton of, uh, that those are 21 pound feet. And then these 13 millimeter bolts out here and over here, uh, those are going to be 16 pound feet. All right, so now we've put uh, the forward shield back in place. This is made out of sheet molded composite. I like to torque all these to spec because I don't want to crush the, uh, the sheet molded composite. It's like fiberglass, but they Technically, a sheet molded composite. Uh, so there are two types of fasteners here. There are 13 millimeter bolts and there are 10 millimeter bolts. The 10 millimeter bolts are to be torqued to 80 inch pounds. That's 80, 80 inch pounds. And the 13 millimeter bolts are to be torqued to 16 pound feet of torque. All right, that's everything I know about replacing a transmission filter in a C8 Corvette. Uh, the NT510 Elite, um, uh, that's the, the programmer that I used during this video. Um, I obviously, there's no sort of paid promotion or anything like that ever on this channel. Uh, but uh, it is Black Friday right now, and um, that device is on sale on Amazon. You have to buy the General Motors specific version. It comes with a, a brand programmed into it. You have to pick which brand you want. Uh, but that version is on sale right now for about $150, whereas normally it's more like $170, $180. So if you need to do this, uh, pick one up now. Uh, you can save yourself some money. Otherwise, uh, if you like this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. We do a lot of these types of videos. Try to never make a video unless it's something that's valuable or interesting to the audience. Uh, so they tend to be few and far between, but I think you'll like them in general when they do come out. And until next time, guys, see you later.